السلام علیکم 6 پی ایم دس از ریڈیو پاکستان دی نیوز ریڈ بائی علی احمد فرسٹ دی ہیڈ لائنز پرائم منسٹر ایٹ ا میٹنگ ان اسلام آباد ریویوڈ امپلیمنٹیشن سٹیٹس آن ویریس ڈیسیژنز میڈ بائی کاؤنسل آف کامن انٹرسٹس ان اسلام آباد ٹوڈے منسٹر فار اکنامک افیئرز says Moody's upgraded Pakistan's outlook from negative to stable due to prudent economic policies of the government. Special Assistant on Information and Broadcasting says the government will continue facilitating institutions to work within their constitutional domains. A 6.4 magnitude earthquake jolted different parts of the country this evening. In occupied Kashmir, forceful demonstrations were held today against the Indian occupation and ongoing lockdown in the territory. In India, death toll has risen to nine during a nationwide protests against discriminatory citizenship law. In Afghanistan, six Taliban, including a key commander, Mullah Gul Muhammad, have been killed during clashes in Balkh province. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Imran Khan chaired a preparatory meeting for the forthcoming 41st meeting of Council of Common Interests in Islamabad today. The meeting also reviewed implementation status of various decisions made during past CCI meetings. Prime Minister Imran Khan says the federal government is committed to assist Balochistan government in the best possible manner for the progress of the province. He was talking to a delegation of parliamentary party Balochistan led by Special Assistant Yar Mohammed Srinth in Islamabad today. The Prime Minister said bringing improvement in the living standard of the people of Balochistan and socio-economic development in the province is a priority of the federal government. President Dr. Arif Alvi says information and communication technologies are imperative for progress and development of the nations. This he stated while talking to member of the supervisory board of Huabi, Stephen Yai, who along with a delegation called on him in Islamabad today. The president appreciated Huabi's contribution for the Pakistan ICT industry and ICT talent cultivation. He suggested the cooperation between Huawei and MOITT and other stakeholders for the realization of digital Pakistan. Stephen Yai informed the president Huawei is willing to bring global ICT forum and global top ICT experts to Pakistan. Minister for Economic Affairs Hamad Azhar says economy has been put on the track with strenuous efforts of the government under the leadership of the prime minister. In a statement today, he said the IMF board's review is indicating the success of the government's economic reforms. The minister said Moody's upgraded Pakistan's outlook from negative to stable as a result of the PTI government's efforts during the last 15 months. Hamad has said the IMF executive board has admitted that the government's economic reform agenda is moving ahead in the right direction and fruits of these reforms have also started coming forth. He said consistency and continuity of policies is imperative for complete restoration and progress of the economy. Special Assistant to Prime Minister on Information and Broadcasting Dr. Fizos Asha Kavan says the government will continue facilitating institutions to work within their constitutional domains. Speaking at a function in Islamabad this evening, she said the government will ensure internal stability in the country. The special assistant said the government is striving to create an ideal atmosphere for investors and tourists in the country, and the world is also attracting towards Pakistan. Referring to Para 66 and the detailed judgment in high recent case against former President General Retired Pervez Musharraf, Dr. Fizos Ashikaman said it reflected personal grudge and earned bad name for the country. She said the government will fulfill its responsibility and file reference in the Supreme Judicial Council against Special Court Judge Justice Vakar Seit for writing this para. Recognizing the role for the minority community in development of the country, she said the government will continue efforts for the welfare of the minority community in the country. A full court reference to pay tributes to the services of outgoing Chief Justice of Pakistan, Asif Sayyid Khosa, was held at the Supreme Court in Islamabad today. 
the outgoing Chief Justice in his remarks said that his approach remained focused on improving the justice delivery system. Enumerating the steps taken during his tenure to improve the justice system, he said an all-out effort was made by him to put our house in order. Asif Said Khosa said the backlog of criminal appeals pending before the court for about 25 years has been wiped out. Chief Justice-designate Justice Gulzar Ahmed paid glowing tributes to the services of Asif Said Khosa, saying he made a deep impact in the jurisprudential growing of law in Pakistan. Justice Gulzar Ahmed will take oath as the Chief Justice of Pakistan at a ceremony at Awani Sadr in Islamabad tomorrow. President Arif Alvi will administer him the oath. This is Radio Pakistan. A 6.4 magnitude earthquake jolted different parts of the country, including Islamabad, Rawalpindi, Peshawar, Azad Kashmir, South Waziristan, this evening. According to the National Seismic Monitoring Center, the epicenter of the earthquake was 210 kilometers deep in Hindu Kush, Afghanistan. No report of loss has been received. In occupied Kashmir, people held forceful demonstrations in Nohatta, Srinagar, and other areas of territory. Today, against Indian ongoing lockdown in the territory. The occupation authorities allowed people to offer Juma prayers today at historic Jamia Masjid located in the Hatta area of Srinagar after keeping mosques locked for 19 consecutive weeks since 5th of August. However, after Juma congregational prayers, youths took to the streets and raised high-pitched anti-India and pro-freedom slogans. People also held anti-Indian protests in Safo, Ulvama, Bandipura and other areas. Indian police and troops used brute force against the protesters at different places. The occupation authorities kept chairman of Hurriyat Forum, Mirwais Umar Farooq under house arrest and did not allow him to deliver Juma sermon at Jamia Masjid. Meanwhile, the situation in territory remained grim as the military lockdown continued on 138th day today amid chilly weather. In India, death toll has risen to nine during a nationwide protests against discriminatory citizenship law. The law is especially against Muslims from neighboring countries of India. Hundreds of protesters have been booked for taking part in protests across the country against the act. The situation across Uttar Pradesh remains tense while in Delhi, prohibitory orders have been imposed in 12 police station areas. Meanwhile, Indian authorities today shut down the internet in northern parts of the country and imposed a curfew in a southern Mangaluru city. In Afghanistan, six Taliban, including a key commander, Mullah Gul Muhammad, have been killed during clashes in Zari district of Balkh province. According to Army spokesman, police chief of Zeri district has been wounded during the clashes. Turkey says it will retaliate against potential U.S. sanctions over its purchase of Russian defense systems and a natural gas pipeline. Turkish state TV quoted President Rashid Tayyip Erdogan saying that the S-400 deal was already completed. Erdogan said this is a breach of our rights in the fullest sense and we will, of course, have our own sanctions against all of these. On the second day of second test against Sri Lanka in Karachi, Pakistan in their second innings were 57 for no loss at stumps today. The score for Sri Lanka was 271, whereas score for Pakistan was 191 and 57 for no loss. And finally, the weather. Mainly cold and dry weather is expected in most parts of the country during the next 24 hours. However, dense fog is likely to prevail in plain areas of Punjab and Upper Sins. Light rain, thunderstorm, light snowfall over the hills with cloudy weather conditions is expected at isolated places in Gilgit, Baltistan and Kashmir. And that is the end of the news. For more news and analysis, log on to our website radio.gov.pk. And for the live video streaming of our bulletins, visit the link facebook.com slash radiopakistan news of